project their madness. And then when you not take it, explosion. Because how dare you? You know, from when me love you, how dare you not love me back? <laughs> and mark you is not that you not love them back, you know. But at the moment, you're going through something. And you're not inspired to smile. You don't feel like smiling. Like me say, go listen to that. Go dig up that Stephen Marley song there. And listen to it. If you don't see me smiling, it ain't got nothing to do with you. You need to take yourself out of the center of people, life, and experience. Take yourself out of it. Take yourself out of the center of people, life, and allow them. Just allow them. Just allow them. Just allow them. You know, you know, them don't need your permission. But triple, you know, say me and you, people like we different, you know, because we don't give a fuck. We don't give a fuck if they like we are not. Because, you see, people will hold your hostage in a simple things. Like, me sell music, you know. Me sell music. Me not sell myself. I mean, no one will be a female artist and then sell sex. Me not sell sex. I've never sell sex. You ever see me run a back road? You see me back at school, I don't know what you. Me not sell sex. Me give away sex more while. And people give away back sex to me, but me not sell sex. Me sell music. And then, the more you hostage with the music. Because, and then them say you're ungrateful. No, how them two things are equate? You buy my song, thank you, thank you, and this is genuine. I'm not being facetious. I am not being cynical, sarcastic, or anything like that. Thank you, I appreciate it. You didn't have to buy my music. I say that every time. Thanks. There are many, many things you could have done besides listen to me or buy my music. But now that you have bought my music, you paid for some music and you got it. That transaction is complete. There's no residual. No residual um, entitlement. None. Zero. And of course, somebody's going to watch this today and walk away and say, she rude and she not manners and she don't have no regard for people and she ungrateful because imagine if we make them and we make them artists here, you know? Well, my mother make me still. My mother, they take a joke from a man. Bam, here I am. That's who make me. You like my music. And liking my music and liking me are not synonymous, you know, but many people don't get that. And I figure if you don't want to like me because you, you don't want to like my music because you don't like me, that's fine. You have that choice too. And I respect it. I am comfortable with it. But to see me on the street and demand something is the rudest, rudest, most thoughtless, Behavior, attitude, possible. A rude beyond belief. I have had instances where I sit down and have a meal, sit down at a restaurant and eat with my husband and a man just pull up a chair and just sit down between me. Because he is a fan. <laughs> Ooh. Fan. Remember, you know, when him sit down with female wife, you know, if a man ever draws a stool and sit down there, he take him off of the stool and beat him with it. But when me sit down, with my man. Them can pull up a seat because them are fun. So the permission change. The permissions change. The permissions change. Dependent on where you stand in the situation. You're not a genuine person. You're not unbiased. You're not nice. In fact, I would go as far as say you're an asshole. Asshole. You heard me correctly. Papa Robbie, are you still here? Look at me using it again. You are an intergluteal cleft. I love that term. Allow people. Allow people. Allow all. Not just artists. Allow people. Allow people. So if somebody feel like cry, make them cry. If you don't know why they're crying, 
and you feel like there might be something you can do to help then yes help but in the same breath that you're helping remember that also does not incur any liability so the fact that you are helpful and you want to help it does not mean that they're obligated to accept the help either so if they if they decline the help just just bow out gracefully the fact is depending on the severity of what they're going through they might actually respond to you even in aggression they might tell you to fuck off and leave them alone and mind their own business and when they say that just do it just fuck off and leave them alone and mind your own business and don't take it personal it's not about you it never was and when you approach somebody and say you want to help if it's actually them you want to help then it should be about them meaning if they say fuck off just fuck off just fuck off i have no problem fucking off none in fact that's where i start from every time they fuck off so I have to leave from out of my comfortable fuck off space for come forward and say, do you need help? And when you say no, fuck off, you know what that mean? Go back over your space. Intergluteal. Intergluteal. Interglutial. I think so. Or T-E-A-L. Interglutial, yeah. Interglutial. Cleft. DJ Tiger T, I'm not telling you to fuck off. Why would I be telling you to fuck off? Do not, do not uh, project your insecurities on me on my life today. I'm talk, just sit down and listen and hear what I talk about. Because I talk about something serious. I talk about not just this time that we're going through, but all time. And right now, it's even more important. It's even more important. If you just allow people allow people if, if somebody I go through something and them want to cry make them cry if them angry you don't know why them angry you don't know why them angry just picture this them just call them just call from your, your picnic school say somebody grab your picnic and took off from out of the schoolyard and gone and you frantic on the roadside you don't know if you do it yourself you have ball and somebody come to, to you and tell you say you have to contain yourself you're in a public because appearances matter. May I tell you so that's my day. I go get it. Get it. You don't know. Just, just stop being so important in a people's life and just mind your business. Stop. Just stop be some little manic. Stop be some little manic when you sit down out here so I concern yourself about people bonnet and slippers in an airport. And just mind your fucking business. Mind your business. Mind the brain in your head. And stop worrying about what happened other people's head. Just left them alone. Not take people's head put by your head. Not take my ball and put by your head. So if me want ball, and you see how much time I say it, because I want it rev. I want it rev it. If me want ball, make me ball. If me want cuss, make me cuss. Whatever it is, we inspire me to do this. No must inspire the same way, and you don't know. You don't know. People have a style. After them done instruct a behavior in you, and then them find out what it cause it and realize, fuck it, justify it. Then them say, oh, but me know. She should have said that. Like, why the fuck me need to say that? Why do I need to tell you why I am acting the way I'm acting when it has nothing to do with you? Why are you so important to this process? How you get involved? Why you, a complete fucking stranger, who I'm not even aware of? I don't know you. We don't know each other. You just happen for come along. Often because you're fast. Because you're fast and you're enough. So you're the, all the way over this one. You hear a commotion and you run come for concert. Well, because you're fucking enough. And now when you reach, you're full of judgment. Like somebody call you. Like you're important to this. And then you're full of opinions. And you say, I have the right to my opinion. No, you do not. You have the right to form an opinion, but you don't have the right to insert it in my space. Every man have the right to have a penis, but he not have the right to insert it in me. So you can keep your opinion and your right with you. Keep it to yourself. Hmm. Anyway. 
now that we we have ascertained that other people's business don't know your business and people have the right to feel sad to feel hurt to cry to be angry to be all of these things to be every single emotion kind of remind me of a scene in a first wives club when when my girl um, Goldie Hawn did a talk about her emotions, say, I have every one of them. We all have every one of them. We are people, we are humans, and this comes with being human. This is the human condition. We're full of feelings. And we're allowed to have them, and they're legal. They're part of us. Suppressing feelings is not a healthy thing. Stop trying to mandate your dysfunction. The fact that you suppress everything is a dysfunction, and you need help. Don't try to mandate it. Don't come out a road and instruct other people to be as sick as you are. You need help. Suppressing, suppressing, suppressing is a dysfunction. And the fact that you don't ever cry is not something to brag about. It's something to seek professional help for. It's a dysfunction. So when you see other people crying, let them cry. Don't tell them say them weak. And it don't matter if it's a man, woman, boy, or girl. Men should cry too. This is the pain response. This is the, the hurt response. The sadness response. So let them cry. Yes, Diane. Stop trying to mandate your dysfunction. It's a dysfunction. That you don't cry. That you have misplaced um, you see other people with them healthy aggression. Yes, I said healthy aggression. Because when you come to me with fuckery and you impose it in my space, I'm aggression, you're going to meet enough. You could have probably get another response. You could have probably get another response where it might work better or it might not work as well. But aggression is also one response. Aggression always save animal out in the wild from them predators. So, uh, Sharon. If me pay him any mind, at this point, I never want to see nothing from him. Because him, half he know better. But for, for serious, this is our beat we in our society of Jamaica and no doubt many other places. Say, so we, we not allow ourselves for experience, for acknowledge, and for act out with feelings let them out we have this appearance culture this keep up appearance culture this is this keeping up appearances culture this i have it bucket culture it's sick it is sick and on a need forget help feet Having a culture of always having to keep up appearances and centering everything around how it looks is sick. I don't have a problem with aesthetics, you know. I do not. Well, ent entire industries are built around aesthetics. I love industry. I love business. I love business. I may see me good, look good friend here, Keisha Unstoppable. Look good. You never catch her with a hero at a place. But I can tell you this. If you fuck around in my mobex. And if, if, if you drop something from her little toe, I know she got ball. She have feelings. She have a normal human being. The fact say you look good not stop you from ball. The fact say you are famous not stop you from cry. It not stop you from being hurt. Someone who get too caught up in the appearances. And, and in being caught up in the appearances are one thing, you know. But you want mandated for other people. So you feel insecure in your own skin. You feel inadequate. You feel invalid. And then you project that upon me and you tell me, say, me have to keep up your same appearance. Me not have to keep up your appearance. Girl, boy, me valid. From a wake up in the morning, me valid. From a barn, me valid. Me valid. Me not valid because you don't know me, you know. Me not valid because you don't like me song, you know. Me valid because me exist. I am. I am. Me there. So me valid. Just like you. Chelian. Wagwan, how are you keeping in these times? Me dey talk about. <laughs> me dey talk about. 
um, and a mental health, you know, and just emotions and expressions of emotions and, and allowing each other to my ball on the road where the answer somebody come to me and said, No, this is the time when I need to be strong. And I tell him about him bumbo clot. I tell him to fuck off. I need to be strong. There's never a need. Unless I lift up sitting. I know something, I don't lift up nothing. What I need to be strong for? Fuck me, I lift. Me lift one foot and put it down and lift the next and put it down and walk. I don't need much strength for that. I need to be strong. And whenever I need to be strong, I have the power of discernment. I know when. I know when to act on my strength. And I decide when I, do, I can retire my strength and just be sappy and ball. Peace and may I keep good enough. Surprisingly. And my ball, you know. My ball when I watch. And that time when I lie down and watch some sappy romance. <laughs> my ball for them there too. Because no matter how I can see it, I come listen to the kind of foolishness when me watch these days. Because I don't want nothing where I tired out my brain. I don't want to sit down and watch no suspense where I go make me a fair try to figure out and turn a detective and now me a forensics expert because me a try to figure out who did do what. Like, fuck a duck, I don't want none of that. Life has come with enough shit to figure out right now. I just want to lie down in my bed and watch something where as soon as it starts and I see the character that I know, them two they go fuck. That's it. No thought process involved. And then, the little storyline with them show between, because we know what's happening, you know. But you see the little storyline with them flinging between now, we make one conflict come out, depending on how the conflict grip you. And then the climax come with the solution. And you see, oh my God. Worse, one of the, when I watched, the last thing I watched, I think two nights ago was, he's all that. Stupid little high school, man me ball. Mm, shameless. Shame. Less balling with my item, bleh. but I'm one in my bed. So I don't like to me I wake up nobody else. Me not depend nobody else space. Me in my own space. And if you walk in for me a ball, me yeah, make a ball to you and be like, look what I'm just to her. <laughs> I was just to him. This a part of life. It just means eh. It just means I'm eh, normal. I watched She's All That. That's what I'll get. The, uh, that's what I'll um, introduce to the song Kiss Me. That's where I got introduced to Kiss Me. And it be, and I went and bought the album. So yeah, I know the movie. I watched the remake. Hallmark movies. Oh my God, I watch Hallmark movies. Oh, Hallmark movies. And me and the night time. Mm. Ah. <laughs> it works. Because sometimes... That's all I want to do. That's all I have space for. This is all I have space for. I just want something. When I go, now go give me the ooh. Look at that. Hold on a minute. It never yet looked the same on the camera. Never. This is so nice. It did the behind the the he is the cover it. So it never defined. And that's why I never did a plan for no sunset. But wow. Just sit down and watch it always make me feel so good. No matter what I go on, this reset. Every day, every morning, every evening, reset, reset. You can't do nothing where this can't override or overwrite this. Nobody can ever upstage this. Nobody. Is it? It's all of them things are natural things. The sunset natural, the sunrise natural, rain natural, storm natural, earthquake natural, balling natural. And every day sunshine, sometimes rain fall. And every day we smile, sometimes we cry. These things are natural and like me say, if you don't see me smiling, it ain't got nothing to do with you. Now my daddy ain't been on the rock. My daddy come off of this rock when me a one year old, so me ain't get for say. My daddy been on the rock so long. But I did inherit a permanent screw. I don't know when people inspire it. And then sometimes me inspired for laugh, for cry, for smile. Sebastopol, California, big up, granddaddy smoking. I miss you guys so much. And me and Jacques have some long overdue reasoning and 
just reasoning and sitting and being humans and talking about life together and I miss that too because them they are the biggest part of my travels I don't know what other people travel for but the connections the discovery the discussions everything are that me come out for Spartan big up yourself good evening and this this right is on me therapy right everything a therapy talking to you a therapy watching the sunrise watching the sunset a therapy having just ha having the knowledge that life continues even while life seems to end it a continue life life can't end life a life we got brooklyn and it continues and what we have to learn to do is take what we learn from it take all the materials and the tools where life give you and make the best thing we can possibly make out of it and just be grateful try to carry as little guilt as possible because guilt is a debilitating disease try to harbor as little enmity and these are not things when I tell people these are things when I tell myself to enough things happen to me when I, when I, when I I keep some of it. And I know that's not good for me. I have to let go of fight with my, my, my condition myself every day. And over time, I find that I have a lot less things that I hang on to. But I still have residue. And I need to let go of fight. Them here, this is what I need to hold on to. This. I need to hold on to. The sunrise is what I need to hold on to. The facts are people there. Because right now, some people sit down somewhere by themselves and don't have nobody at all, you know. I have people. I mean, right now, I go go back up my house. People did it. My brother did it. And my daughter did it. I have people. I never going to work. So I'm not alone. And I'm just as full fool as me. So me and them do all of the same foolishness, the same madness, together. Right? And for that, I'm grateful. I have life. I have everything I need to go through life. I have. I have so much. I have so much in a one time when people have so little. There's gravity in that. Say, right now, I sit on a. a, a Every day, not day I go by, I mean, I think about my mother. I, mean, me, me think about the, everything, not just the good times, the bad times too. I relive everything, every single moment. I search, I search through everything for see what I could I do different, how I could I do this different. And the truth is, I can't go back and do nothing different, so it don't make no sense. A foolishness. I know so I do everything when I could, for try for prolong her as best I could, but I couldn't do nothing else. Marcia, Marcia, you there? Let me see you know. Listen, Kelly say. Share, um, Kelly says, share, adopt you as her grandma. No, you know, I may tell you the truth, you know, me, 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 they right there with her. So, hey, you have two additional people in your family now, you just stuck with me. And I think about, I sit down and I think about me losing my mother, right? And for a while, I'm not gonna lie, I come, I delete my Instagram because I just never want to see nobody and I don't want nobody to come tell me no fucking condolence and I don't want to hear nothing, I don't want to hear no sadness and no sympathy and no nothing like that. I don't want nobody to ask me nothing, I don't want nobody to tell me nothing. I'm just never, I'm not interested, I don't want to hear nothing. So I delete it, right? And I come off of it, I stop using my Facebook. I don't really go check it, I'm going to, I never, I never try to delete it, but it has said I have to disable my account and I don't want to do that. So, and I'm not back. I'm not back. I'm going to delete it again. Um, because I'm not really in the, I'm not in the mood for all of the back and forth in where people seem to be addicted to these days. I don't want any of it. I have enough of free life for going right here, so I don't want to hear nothing from nobody. But, you see, when I think about what, what I feel, I'm 48 years old and I just lose my mother. You know how much Pitney lose their mother from birth? You know how much Pitney lose their mother from birth when never meet her, never, never once, never get a chance to see her smile down in her face? No for man dead in a childbirth. Me manage to be lucky enough to have my mother right up to adulthood, to old age. And right as so, right as so I'm there, right now, and me and mourn, and me and my nephew are mourn together because of my mother and a female grandmother. But my big sister died. 
some well, a years ago, 15 years ago. And I'm a nephew, mother, that. And that time, I'm a one teenager, I'm in lower teens. So, me just I lose my mother when I'm 48, him lose his mother when I'm under 15. And if me feel them sort of way, how him did feel? You know? There's some kids right now, today, we just lose their mother. And they're my picnic. You lose your dad last Thursday, see? This, me not, me not say, this invalidate my feelings of grief, it doesn't. But in the same breath, I understand. So I'm lucky, I'm fought in it, I just lose her. I'm fought, I turn 48 with my mother still there on the planet. 48. I'm lucky. Lucky. I manage for, she's to meet her grandpitney, my great grandpitney. And I and her have 48 years of laughter and good times and quarrel and fight and argue and tear up, patch up. Enough. 48. So, it could have worse, but at the same time, it's something more jarring. Jarring, and, and, and something where I could have never, like, I could have never anticipate this. Like, my mother pronounced dead in the front of my vehicle. Sit down in the front seat. Lean back, recline with the seat belt on. Right there, so she pronounced. They, they saw a doctor. Say, who are you to dispense? Daughter, son. Well, it would have appear as if. Like, all right, no say it, no say it, no say it, just no say it. Come, I didn't know, but no say it. And you see, your mother went missing in Trinidad 2011. Fuck a duck. See that now? At least me did have my mother sick and know she had to go. Me didn't know. Me know this had come. Me know this had come for months now. For your mother just simply go missing. I don't know how for major grief. I don't know how for major sadness. And we should never do that because everybody's response and everybody's stimuli hit different. Everybody project different. Everybody act out different. Everybody feel different. So I don't compare. But me pretty sure, so if my mother did go missing, if she was quite fine, if she was alright and she go missing, I know me to have a much worse reaction than if she's sick for a long time and she's old. And she feel gradually. So. Me can come out of my position. And come in at yours and say yo. Fuck that hurts. Like I'm really sorry. And if you feel like you need to talk to somebody. Hit me up in my DMs. And we're not going to talk about grief. We can just talk about life. And let me, let me just echo. The sentiments of my virgin who I was talking to, who inspired me to come live. Dr. Michael Abrams, if you don't follow him yet, follow him. We don't agree on everything and sometimes we fight, but may I tell you something now, I'm good person, good human. Good person, heart in the right place. It's not pick us off, put in for him heart. Him heart in the right place. And he mean well, and him advice good. And he work as an OBGY as an OBGYN, but him step outside of that and work as a psychiatrist. But for some of the time, I'm a straight psychiatrist to me. Because the other day I sit down and hey, I know him just go him call and, and say, Yo, you're good. And we call and start out because me me message him and ask him if he's alright. And him and him say, yeah, and him tell me what I go on with him, say him not feel hundred because he got you. You know. Enough things because he's my, he my doctor. I see a lot of shit I go on now and it bother him. And then he asks me, But how are you? You alright? And I start telling him, and then I never intend to tell him nothing. I did actually check on him. And turns out, <laughs> fuck a duck, I was not. And I just kept talking and talking. And you know, when I start talking, he ain't no shutting off this pipe. But he said, And he listen. And he listen, and he listen. I may have no friend who do that. You have another woman with him, Renee Rattray. Dr. Renee Rattray. 
the universe know what it did do when it put the molecules together we formed a perfect human being. Yeah, you say so. Perfect. There are people who inspire me every day. Get yourself some people who inspire you. Stop follow people for motivation. Look for inspiration. People will inspire you to tap inside of yourself and find you. For find you. For face you. People will inspire you to look for yourself and be comfortable with it. For stand up in your mirror without judgment. I'm a daughter, glasses. I'm a borrow. Because I can't find for me. And I can't read without them. But. Find yourself some people. 